Dear chemistry teachers, climate change is one of the most significant issues of our times and its impacts are becoming inseparable from our day-to-day -day lives. It is critical that our students are made aware of this issue and that they can understand this problem from different disciplinary perspectives. In this lecture, we show the chemistry connections in climate change and show you how you teachers can teach some topics in chemistry using a climate related example. We present educational resources that bring climate studies into the mainstream undergraduate chemistry curriculum. These resources, which are both teaching tools and lesson plans with a step-by-step -step guide, will allow you chemistry teachers to teach topics in chemistry using climate related examples. You do not have to deviate from your prescribed syllabus. However, the use of such tools and lesson plans will lead to an increased climate awareness of your students. Again, I reiterate, you can continue to teach topics in chemistry as per your syllabus, but the use of these lesson plans and teaching tools will lead to enhanced climate awareness for your students. Use these digital pedagogical tools in your chemistry classroom and learn how to incorporate a multidisciplinary approach to teaching, introduce relevant topics. In this case, how do I introduce climate change topics in my teaching of chemistry? How do I effectively use technology in the classroom to better engage with my students? And how do I enhance student learning? You can integrate climate science in your chemistry teaching and use the educational resources we will present to teach topics in the chemistry undergraduate syllabus. These topics include biogeochemical cycles, the carbon cycle, atomic number and atomic mass, isotopes and isotopic compositions, spectroscopy, the molecular structure of compounds, the electromagnetic spectrum, pH scale acids and bases, ocean acidification, chemical weathering and the Urey reaction, carbon chemistry, phase diagrams, aerosols, fertilizers and many more. Let us begin by showing you some lesson plans. These are lesson plans that allow you as a chemistry teacher to teach topics in the chemistry undergraduate syllabus, but through the use of climate related examples, case studies and activities. We will show you lesson plans on atomic number, mass number and isotopes, on infrared spectroscopy, on the pH scale and acids and bases, on buffers and buffering action, and on black carbon and its impacts on climate. Let us begin with our first lesson plan and this is titled Atomic Number, Mass Number, Isotopes and Isotopic Compositions as Climate Proxies. As an undergraduate teacher of chemistry or even earth sciences, you can use this set of computer tools to help you in teaching atomic number, mass number, isotopes and an application of using isotopic data which is related to climate change. This lesson plan will allow your students to understand what is atomic number, what is mass number, what are isotopes, how do you calculate isotopic ratios and what might be an application of the use of isotopic compositions in climate studies. Thus, the use of this lesson plan will allow you to integrate teaching of a core topic in chemistry, in this case atomic number and isotopes, with a topic in climate science. This lesson plan is aimed at both high school and undergraduate level and you may choose to adapt it to your situation and your, for your students. The topics in discipline include atomic number, mass number, isotopes and isotopic ratios and applications of isotopic compositions. In this case, how can isotopic ratios be used to calculate past temperature and recreate Earth's past climate? This particular uh, lesson plan might take 130 to 150 minutes or so. This lesson plan includes a video micro lecture that first introduces the concepts of atomic number, mass number and isotopes. This is from 
Khan Academy. This is followed by a reading about what isotopic ratios are and what might be the relationship between isotopic compositions and temperature. This is a reading from Harvard. Now, as a teacher of undergraduate chemistry teaching atomic number and isotopes, you might be using these first two tools and essentially giving the basics of the chemistry concepts using these tools. What we would request you to do is to actually also use an additional lab activity which is shown as our third component of this lesson plan. And this one allows your students to recreate the climate of planet earth over the last half a million years using isotopic compositions of oxygen and hydrogen from an ice core in Antarctica. We can then see how earth's climate has varied over the last half a million years and what the role of human induced global warming might be. Here is a step by step guide towards the use of this lesson plan in your classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action and you may customize the lesson plan according to your preference and requirements. First, introduce the topic through a short video micro lecture. Discuss with your students what the components of an atom are. Then you can play this video micro lecture titled Atomic Number, Mass Number and Isotopes to introduce the concepts of atomic number, mass numbers and isotopes. This video will help students understand the definitions of the terms through the examples of hydrogen, carbon and uranium isotopes. This video is available from Khan Academy. Next you can discuss using an online reading. Have your students read and you can discuss the article isotopic analysis from Harvard University to introduce the occurrence and distribution of oxygen isotopes. This reading will help your students understand isotopic ratios, the relationship between isotopic compositions and temperature and how scientists use isotopic compositions to recreate past temperature and climate. Finally, conduct a hands-on activity using an interactive visualization. You can have your students explore the relationship between isotopic compositions and climate through a hands-on classroom or lab activity. This one titled From Isotopes to Temperature is created by Spruce Schoenemann from University of Washington Earth and Space Sciences. In this activity, your students will analyze isotopic compositions of ice core data from Antarctica and they will infer past temperatures and climate. They will plot graphs in Excel to perform data analysis and interpretation. Use these tools and the concepts learned in the lesson plan to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. That is, these are the sort of questions you can ask your students. What is an isotope? What is the relationship between isotopic composition and temperature? How can you use oxygen isotope data from an ice core to determine temperature? And how can you use isotopic composition to reconstruct Earth's past climate? The learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable students to define isotopes and list examples of isotopes, describe how isotopic ratios can be used to infer temperature, explain how past temperature and climate can be determined by analyzing ice core isotopic data, and finally understand the natural variability of Earth's climate and climate change due to anthropogenic causes. If you or your students would like to explore the topic further, you may use some of these additional resources listed on this particular slide. Let us now take a look at another lesson plan. This one is titled Infrared Spectroscopy and the Greenhouse Gas Effect. As an undergraduate level organic chemistry teacher, you can use this set of computer based tools to help teach infrared spectroscopy and the use of IR spectra to detect functional groups in organic molecules. 
The lesson plan will help students differentiate between IR active molecules and IR inactive molecules. It focuses on the behavior of molecules of gases such as CO2 and water vapor when they interact with IR radiation and helps in explaining the greenhouse effect of the atmosphere. Thus, the use of this lesson plan will allow you chemistry teacher to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a core topic in organic chemistry. The topics in this lesson plan include IR spectroscopy, molecular vibration, vibrational modes, IR active molecules, IR absorption and greenhouse gases, the greenhouse effect, diagnostic and fingerprint regions of IR spectra. So if you are teaching these topics as per your syllabus, we would request you to take a look at this lesson plan that will integrate climate understanding with teaching of a core topic in chemistry. The approximate time required for this lesson plan is between 45 and 60 minutes. The contents. There is a series of micro lectures, three of them collectively about 20 minutes in length. First, a video that introduces IR spectroscopy and the working of a spectrometer. Next, a video that explains how the functional groups of a molecule can be identified by examining its IR spectrum. And a video that describes the vibrational modes of polyatomic molecules and how these modes determine whether the molecules are IR inactive or IR active. Finally, there is a micro lecture and associated reading. This micro lecture explains why most IR active polyatomic gas molecules are greenhouse gases. An associated reading that discusses the vibrational modes of water vapor and CO2 molecules in detail and explains why these gases act as greenhouse gases. Here is a step by step guide towards the use of this lesson plan in the chemistry classroom or lab. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action. You may customize the lesson plan according to your preferences and requirements. Step 1. Introduce the topic through a series of micro lectures. Introduce the topic of spectroscopy and explain how different types of spectroscopy are used to elucidate the structures of molecules of organic compounds. These micro lectures have been developed by the Royal Society of Chemistry. First, introduce IR spectroscopy. Next, explain the application of IR spectroscopy in organic chemistry to detect functional groups in molecules and also describe the vibrational modes of these molecules on absorption of IR light. Use the micro lecture infrared spectroscopy that is on YouTube to explain what happens when a molecule is exposed to IR radiation. Explain to your students that a molecule absorbs IR energy when the frequency of stretching or bending of the molecular bonds corresponds to that of the incident IR light. Use this video to explain the basic workings of an IR spectrometer that is used to obtain the IR spectra for known or unknown molecules. Further, with the help of the video, briefly explain how the functional groups present in a molecule can be deduced by examining its IR spectrum. Next, play the video micro lecture titled Chemistry Vignettes IR Spectroscopy also available on YouTube. Discuss how the pattern of IR radiation absorption spectrum can be used to determine the functional groups present in the molecule. Emphasize that every peak in the IR spectrum is characterized by its frequency, intensity and shape of the band. And that these factors depend on the type of functional group present in the molecule. Further, use the video to describe the fingerprint region of the IR spectrum and that this region can be used to identify an unknown organic molecule. Play this video lecture, Chemistry Vignettes Vibrational Modes, also available on YouTube. Describe to your students the vibrational modes of polyatomic molecules. Explain to them that only some vibrational modes, those that lead to a fluctuating dipole, 
result in absorption of IR light energy. Introduce the term IR active molecules and IR inactive molecules to your students by using the CO2 molecule as an example and to describe its modes of vibration. Following these three micro lectures, explore the topic further with one more micro lecture and an associated reading. Use the micro lecture and associated reading of Professor David Archer from the University of Chicago to discuss the effects of IR absorption on gas molecules. Explain vibrational modes and why certain atmospheric gases such as CO2, water vapor and methane act as greenhouse gases. The video micro lecture titled Greenhouse Gases can be used to describe the various modes of vibration in polyatomic gas molecules. Use the video to discuss the development of a charge imbalance that is an electrical dipole in molecules due to the asymmetrical stretching or bending modes of vibration. Explain that this results in the absorption of heat energy from incident IR radiation in gas molecules such as CO2, water vapor and methane. Therefore, these gases trap the heat energy in the atmosphere and act as greenhouse gases. The associated reading from David Archer's book Global Warming Understanding the Fo uh, Forecast can be used for a detailed description of how chemical bonds respond to incident IR light. Make sure to explain to your students that due to electrical dipole moments developed during molecular vibrations, some bonds absorb IR energy of specific frequencies. Use this reading to explain the various vibrational modes in polyatomic gas molecules such as water vapor and CO2. Reiterate that the absorption of incident IR radiation by these gas molecules in certain vibrational modes is what makes them greenhouse gases. Questions or assignments? Use the tools and the concepts learned in this lesson plan to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. What happens when a molecule absorbs IR light? What information do the diagnostic and fingerprint regions of the IR spectrum of a compound convey? What are the vibrational modes of CO2 molecules? Discuss why CO2, methane and water vapor are greenhouse gases while oxygen and nitrogen are not. The learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable students to 1. Identify the presence or absence of functional groups in an unknown organic compound and use IR spectroscopy as a tool for the structural identification of organic compounds. 2. Students will be able to differentiate between an IR active mode of vibration and an IR inter inactive mode of vibration in a molecule. 3. Ex students will be able to explain why CO2 is a greenhouse gas and why nitrogen and oxygen are not. 4. Students will be able to discuss the relative global warming potentials of various greenhouse gases. If you or your students would like to explore the topic further, there are some additional resources listed in this lesson plan that we invite you to take a look at. A lesson plan titled Teaching the pH Scale and Acids and Bases Through Climate Related Examples. As a high school or undergraduate chemistry teacher, you can use this set of computer based tools presented in this lesson plan to help teach the pH scale, acids and bases, acidification and maybe some aspects of environmental chemistry. This lesson plan allows students to understand the pH scale and acidification by analyzing the effects of atmospheric CO2 on ocean chemistry. The activity explores the potential effect of climate change on ocean acidification and the possible impacts of ocean acidification on marine organisms. Thus, the use of this lesson plan will allow you to teach a climate science topic with a core topic in chemistry, in this case, the pH scale, acids and bases. This lesson plan 
is about 120 to 150 minutes in length. The topics in discipline that are covered include pH scale, acids and bases, ocean carbonate chemistry, seawater chemistry, aragonite saturation state and ocean acidification. It contains a visualization that introduces the topics of pH scale, the pH of different liquids, ocean acidification and the possible impacts of ocean acidification on marine life. A short video micro lecture that introduces the topic of ocean acidification and the examples of effects of high ocean acidity on marine life. There is a classroom or lab activity to explore and analyze the relationship between the growth of oyster lava and chemistry of ocean water by using actual data from a location in the US. Here is a step-by-step -step guide towards the use of this lesson plan in your chemistry classroom or laboratory. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action. You may customize the lesson plan according to your preferences or requirements. First, introduce the topic through this interactive visualization. Begin by introducing the topics of acid and bases to your students. Proceed as you would to explain what the pH scale is to your student. You can discuss the pH values of various common compounds. Give a few examples of chemical reactions that generate acids and bases. Now use part one of this visualization tool that we have provided titled Our Acidifying Ocean from Inquiry to Student Environmental Action Project in order for better engaging in an interactive manner with your students. This tool will help you to introduce all the topics of what is the pH scale, what is the pH of different liquids, what is ocean acidification and what might be some impacts of ocean acidification on marine life. Next, play a short video which is about 6 minutes titled Ocean Acidification. This is developed by the National Science Foundation and NBC Learn and to explain to your students how CO2 affects the pH of ocean water and how an increase in ocean acidification might adversely impact marine animals. Finally, conduct an classroom or lab activity. You can explore this topic with your students in an engaging interactive manner through a classroom lab activity titled Ocean Acidification and Oysters Lab, which is created by Hilary Pilevsky from the University of Washington Oceanography. This activity will help your students explore how a change in ocean chemistry can affect the growth of marine organisms, specifically oyster larvae. Students will use real data from a location in the US and will plot graphs in Excel. They will perform data analysis and interpretation. The various steps and instructions towards the use of this particular tool are provided in this lesson plan. Use the tools and concepts learned in this lesson plan to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. What is the pH value of ocean water? Is it alkaline or acidic? What are the main chemical reactions in ocean acidification? How could an increase in fossil fuel usage change the pH value of ocean water? If ocean water became more acidic, how might it affect oyster and sea urchin populations in the oceans? What are the possible impacts of climate change on ocean chemistry? The learning outcomes. The tools presented in this lesson plan will enable your chemistry students to 1. Describe the pH scale. They should be able to explain what is ocean acidification. The students can learn how to discuss about the effects of atmospheric CO2 on ocean chemistry. They should be able to determine the potential effects of climate change on ocean acidification. And they should be able to explore the possible impacts of ocean acidification on marine organisms. If you or your students might want to explore the option further, you can take a look at our additional resources. Also provided here are the credits of the various tools presented in this lesson plan. A lesson plan titled 
black carbon and its impacts on Earth's climate. As an undergraduate chemistry or environmental sciences teacher, you can use this set of computer-based tools to teach about allotropy, various allotropes of carbon and their structural and physical properties. You can also talk about black carbon, what are the sources of black carbon and what might be the impact of black carbon on Earth's climate. This lesson plan will help students understand the concepts of allotropy and the various allotropes of carbon. Students will learn about black carbon, the effect of black carbon on Earth's albedo and therefore its impact on the climate of planet Earth, albedo being the reflectivity of the surface of planet Earth. The lesson plan will also help students to understand how the immediate effect of controlling black carbon emission can potentially slow down the rate of global warming. Thus, the use of this lesson plan allows you chemistry teacher to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a core topic in chemistry or environmental sciences. The various topics in this discipline include allotropy, allotropes of carbon, black carbon, sources of black carbon, heating and cooling effect of black carbon, effect of black carbon on human health, black carbon albedo and its relationship through its emissions. This lesson plan might take 90 to 120 minutes. This lesson plan includes a reading that first defines what is allotropy and describes some allotropes of carbon with their properties. A short video about 6 minutes long to introduce black carbon specifically and its impact on health and climate. A short reading that describes what is the albedo effect of black carbon, how it affects the formation of clouds and can result in both a warming or cooling effect on the earth's surface. And finally, a classroom lab activity and here presented are activities specific for high school teaching as well as for undergraduate teaching, we will focus on the undergraduate classroom or lab activity that discusses the implications of black carbon emissions on health and earth's climate. Here is a step by step guide towards the use of this lesson plan in your chemistry classroom or lab. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action. You may customize this lesson plan according to your preferences or requirements. Step 1. Use the textbook reading titled Allotropes of Carbon which is provided by Lumen Learning to introduce what is allotropy and to discuss the various allotropes of carbon. You can use this tool to explain to your students the structural details of carbon allotropes, the physical and chemical properties and applications especially in material sciences. This is a short reading. Next. Go to a very short video about 6 minutes in length titled Black Carbon produced by NBC News Learn to introduce the topic of black carbon which is an allotrope of carbon and to describe what might be its sources. You can use this video to discuss with your students what might be the impact of this on our health as well as earth's climate. You can explain to your students using this video how black carbon contributes to global warming or climate change by altering the albedo which is reflectivity of clouds and land and ice surface. You can develop this topic further and discuss with your students using a feature article titled Black Carbon and Warming It's Worse Than We Thought by Carl Zimmer in Yale Environment 360 which is published by the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. This article can be used to discuss with your students how black carbon is second only to carbon dioxide in its heat trapping power. You can use this reading to explain to your students the ways in which clouds are affected by soot or black carbon. Discuss with your students how the albedo effect of black carbon especially in clouds affects the earth's atmosphere as well as its surface temperatures. Explain how black carbon deposition might be speeding up the melting of glaciers in the Himalayas. Finally, explain 
why a reduction in black carbon emission could cause an immediate slowdown of the planet's warming. If you have time, you could now perform a classroom or a lab activity to better engage with your students and to have them learn through an interactive hands-on activity. This activity titled Energy and the Poor, Black Carbon in Developing Nations is developed and hosted at the Science Education Research Center, SERC, at Carlton College. This can be used to discuss with your students how the burning of fossil fuels and biomass based fuels results in black carbon emissions, which is more pronounced in developing countries such as ours. You can use this activity to enable your students to critically evaluate the impacts of various household energy sources, synthesize a wide range of social health and environmental impacts and potentially generate solutions to this problem. Instructions for the use of this activity are provided in this lesson plan. You can use the tools and the concepts learnt in this lesson plan to have your students answer the following questions. What are allotropes? What are the various allotropes of carbon and their properties? What are the various sources of black carbon? What are the different effects of black carbon on clouds? How does it modify rainfall patterns? How the deposition of black carbon on ice caps might affect the melting of ice itself? How can you explain how black carbon can have a cooling or warming effect on the planet? What is the effect of black carbon on human health? The learning outcomes with the usage of this lesson plan. The tools presented in this lesson plan will enable your students to 1. Be able to define allotropy and describe some allotropes of carbon. They will be able to explain what black carbon is and what the sources of black carbon might be. They will be able to describe how black carbon affects clouds and cloud formation. They will be able to explain the mechanisms of cooling or heating of the earth's atmosphere due to black carbon. Your students will be able to describe how glaciers may be melting faster because of the effect of black carbon deposition on them. Finally, they should be able to understand the importance of controlling black carbon emissions to reduce potential global warming. If you or your students would like to learn more, there are some additional resources provided in this lesson plan that we invite you to look at. A lesson plan titled Buffers, Buffer Action and Ocean Acidification. As an undergraduate chemistry, environmental sciences or earth sciences teacher, you can use this set of computer based tools to teach about buffers, how buffers work that is the buffer action, ocean carbonate buffering and ocean acidification due to increased levels of atmospheric CO2. This lesson plan introduces the topics of buffers and describes carbonate buffering in the ocean when atmospheric CO2 dissolves in seawater. The buffering capacity of the ocean is however limited and therefore higher concentrations of dissolved CO2 can lead to ocean acidification. Students will use a computer based activity or model presented in this lesson plan to explore how higher atmospheric CO2 levels which results in an increase in dissolved CO2 can lead to ocean acidification. Thus the use of this lesson plan will allow you chemistry teacher to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a core topic in chemistry. The topics covered in this discipline include buffers, buffer action, pH level, buffer capacity, buffer range, acidification, Lee Chatelier's principle. It should take about 30 to 45 minutes. The contents of this lesson plan include a short reading that introduces the topic of buffers and explains the chemistry of buffer action in solutions through various examples. A short video micro lecture about 7 minutes in length to explain carbonate buffering in the ocean. This video also discusses the change in chemical composition of the oceans caused by a higher concentration of dissolved CO2 and the resulting effect on 
ocean marine organism. A visualization which allows students to explore changes in the pH level of oceans for different levels of atmospheric CO2. This includes the CO2 levels corresponding to various emission scenarios which have been published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or the IPCC. Here is a step-by-step -step guide to the use of this lesson plan in your chemistry classroom or lab. We have suggested these steps as a possible plan of action and you may customize the lesson plan according to your preferences or requirements. First, introduce the topic with the help of a reading. Introduce the topic of buffers. Use the reading, how does a buffer maintain pH by Libre Tex to explain buffer action and the maintenance of pH in a buffer solution. Explain to your students the term buffer capacity, buffer range, and the pH equation of a given buffer. Use the examples given in the text to calculate changes in the pH values when a weak acid or base is added to a buffer solution. You can discuss other examples of buffers in daily life, for example, the buffering action in blood. Next, play a video micro lecture titled Ocean Buffer Chemistry produced by Professor David Archer from the University of Chicago to describe carbonate buffering in the ocean. Discuss with your students how oceans behave as carbon sinks by absorbing atmospheric CO2 and the maintenance of ocean pH levels owing to the buffering capacity of seawater. Use this video to explain to your students the buffering range of oceans and the chemical implications of a higher concentration of dissolved CO2. Explain to your students how high levels of atmospheric CO2 could result in an excess of free hydrogen ions, thus potentially changing the pH values of seawater, this being ocean acidification. Further, you can use this video micro lecture to illustrate Lee Chatelier's principle Explain how increased CO2 concentration in seawater sequesters more carbonate ions to keep the system in equilibrium. In conclusion, explain how ocean biota may be affected in the absence of freely available carbonate ions. There is a, an applet that you could now choose to show to your student which is titled Surface Ocean pH Levels which is developed by the King Center for Visualization in the Sciences and is available at the website which is shown. A series of instructions of how you can use this particular applet to further improve the understanding of the core topic in chemistry is provided in this lesson plan as well. This will allow you to actually discuss with your students what might be the implications of a predicted pH value of oceans for different emission scenarios that has been produced by the IPCC. What could be the possible impacts on Earth's biosphere in that case? Questions and assignments. You can use the tools and the concepts learnt in this lesson plan to discuss and determine answers to the following questions. What are buffers? Explain buffer actions. Describe carbonate buffering in the ocean. What is ocean acidification? discuss the possible global impacts of higher level of atmospheric CO2 on the pH of oceans. The learning outcomes. The tools in this lesson plan will enable your students to be able to answer questions such as define buffers and describe buffer action, describe the terms buffer capacity and buffer range, explain the buffering action of seawater, explain ocean acidification and discuss the possible impacts on Earth's biosphere. If you or your students would like to explore the topic further, these additional resources could be useful in your classroom. Dear chemistry teachers, you can see more lesson plans that integrate topics in chemistry with climate sciences at tropicsu.org and at the URL that is provided. These would include Beer Lambert and Earth's Atmosphere, Aerosols and Chemistry, Phase Diagrams and Phase Equilibria, Fertilizers and Climate, Hydrocarbons and Climate Change, 
teaching the carbon cycle using climate related examples, the chemistry of carbon compounds and many more. In this section, we would like to briefly present some teaching tools that you as a chemistry teacher can use in your classroom to teach concepts in chemistry using a climate related example. Some examples here include a reading titled isotopic compositions and ice cores that explains how the analysis of hydrogen and oxygen isotopes from ice cores can determine past temperatures on the earth. A teaching module that uses the pH scale to understand changes in ocean chemistry due to increased CO2 emissions. A classroom or lab activity to understand the carbon cycle. A visualization to observe, understand, explore and analyze the molecular structure of a compound, a carbon compound CO2 or CH4, the effect of electromagnetic radiation on these molecules and the role of greenhouse gases in climate change. A classroom or lab activity that teaches students about different atmospheric aerosols. A lab activity that demonstrates the thermal properties of CO2 which is a greenhouse gas. A video micro lecture that explains carbonate buffering in the ocean. A micro lecture that describes vibrational modes of polyatomic molecules. A video micro lecture that describes phase diagrams of water on earth, Mars and Venus the water vapor feedback mechanism in the atmospheres of these planets. A visualization that allows students to explore changes in the pH levels of oceans for different atmospheric CO2 levels. A video lecture on ocean buffer chemistry. A reading on the molecular vibration modes and the greenhouse effect and many others. Let us take a brief look at a few of these standalone teaching tools that you might want to use in your chemistry teaching for your students. Let us take the example of a visualization titled the greenhouse effect. This is a visualization to observe, understand, explore and analyze the molecular structure of carbon compounds, the effect of electromagnetic radiation on these molecules and the role of greenhouse gases in climate change. Using this interactive visualization, your students can visualize the molecular structure of various atmospheric gases, the effect of infrared photons on these molecules. In this, your students can change the composition of the atmosphere and they can then understand the greenhouse effect of these different molecules and gases. You can use this tool to help your student find answers to how do atmospheric carbon dioxide molecules interact with electromagnetic radiation? what might be the greenhouse effect of the earth's atmosphere. If you are teaching topics such as interaction of molecules with electromagnetic radiation, molecular structures of different compounds such as CO2 and CH4, we invite you to take a look at this particular teaching tool which is developed by PHET interactive simulations from the University of Colorado. Let us briefly look at a classroom lab activity titled Reconstruction of Paleoclimate through the use of isotopes. This is a classroom lab activity to learn about what isotopes are using the example of isotopes of hydrogen and oxygen, understand the isotopic composition of ice from ice cores and understand how isotopic compositions can be used to recreate past temperatures and earth's past climate. In this activity, students will plot graphs and they will analyze data from an ice core in Antarctica called the Vostok ice core. They will learn about ice ages and gas ages. They will learn to calculate past temperatures using this isotope data and they will then discuss potentially the possible impacts of changes in CO2 and methane in our anhydrous effects on Earth's climate. You can use this tool to help your students find answers to questions such as how can you use hydrogen isotope data from an ice core to determine past temperature? How can isotopic compositions of air bubbles trapped in these ice cores be used to recreate Earth's past climate? So if in your classroom you are teaching about isotopes, isotopic ratios, 
we would invite you to take a look at this teaching tool which is developed by Stephanie Furman from Bernard College and is available at Columbia University's website shown here. A video micro lecture titled Phase Diagram and Earth's Climates. This video micro lecture describes the phase diagrams of water on planet Earth, Mars and Venus. It describes the water vapor feedback mechanism in the atmospheres of these planets that influences the greenhouse effect. Students will understand the stable phases of water at various temperatures on Earth. They will be able to explain the concept of the water vapor feedback on Earth's atmosphere by using phase diagrams of water. They can compare this to that of Mars and Venus and will understand the, how the water cycle on Earth makes its climate more suitable to support life while the runaway greenhouse effect of water vapor on Venus makes it uninhabitable. You can use this tool to help your students find answers to questions such as what is the water vapor feedback mechanism in the Earth's atmosphere through the use of the phase diagram of water. Using phase diagrams explain why the climate of Earth is habitable while the climate of Mars and Venus is not. Why did Venus experience a runaway greenhouse effect resulting in a very high surface temperature almost 462 degrees C and discuss why the earth has not yet experienced this effect. So if in your chemistry teaching you are teaching topics such as phase equilibria, phase diagrams, the phase diagram of water, triple and critical problems, uh, critical points in a phase diagram degrees of freedom, feedback mechanism, we would request you to take a look at this particular teaching tool, a video micro lecture that is developed by Professor David Archer from the University of Chicago. Finally, let us take a look at another video micro lecture titled Modes of Vibration in Greenhouse Gas Molecules. This is a micro lecture that describes the vibrational modes of polyatomic molecules how these modes determine whether the molecules are IR inactive or IR active and it explains why most IR active polyatomic gas molecules are indeed greenhouse gases. Through the use of this tool, students will learn about the various modes of vibration in polyatomic gas molecules and the development of a charge imbalance in molecules due to asymmetrical stretching or bending modes of vibration. This results in the absorption of heat energy from incident IR radiation in gas molecules such as CO2, water vapor and methane causing them to behave as greenhouse gases. You can use this tool to help your students find answers to questions such as what happens when a molecule absorbs IR light? What determines whether a polyatomic molecule is IR active or IR inactive? So, if you are a teacher in chemistry teaching IR spectroscopy, molecular vibration, vibrational modes, IR active molecules, greenhouse effect, stretching and bending modes of vibration, we would invite you to take a look at this tool in your teaching. This one is developed again by Professor David Archer from the University of Chicago. So, dear teachers of chemistry, we invite you to make use of these lesson plans and teaching tools in your teaching of topics from chemistry. The use of such tools, such lesson plan will not only enhance the learning of chemistry topics amongst your students, but will also make them more aware of one of the most pressing problems of our time, climate change.